So I've had my Retroid Flip for a few weeks now and I thought it would be fun to tell you all about how I've set it up and what I can do with it. Why did I buy the Flip? I have such a soft spot for clamshell design handhelds and I like the idea that it is properly pocketable and you can just throw it straight into a bag without having to worry about scratching the screen. And so far that has worked really well. I'm out in Madeira this week and I've been playing it a lot while I'm by the pool and out and about and on the plane and just keeping it in my bag has been very, very handy. Another reason that I went for the Flip is I am a sucker for Android gaming and because the Play Store is built in, it's really, really convenient. You don't have to sideload anything. You can just go onto the store and buy things as normal. I also really wanted the Flip for some non-PlayStation emulation. I have a beta for my PlayStation and PSP games, etc. And I think that sort of hardware works perfectly for those games. The clamshell design, I think, is great for DS and 3DS and Game Boy Color. I think it works really, really well. So let's take a look at how I've set it up. I've decided to use the launcher, I can't say it, Digisho. <laughs> I'll put it on the screen. I think this is a very pretty looking launcher and most importantly, it is free as well. You can just download it from the Play Store and then it's on your device, it's really convenient. I've chose this launcher because I think while it is a touchscreen device, the touchscreen on the top, it's a little bit awkward to, to use and navigate. So I wanted to be able to navigate as much as possible with the buttons. And you can through this launcher. You can just use your shoulder buttons to navigate. I think it feels a little bit more like a handheld this way rather than an Android phone with stuff on it. And that was very important to me. I wanted it to feel like a console. So on the device, I have the 3DS, DS, Game Boy Color, GameCube, N64, and a little bit of PSP and PS1. Why not? And this time around, I've decided to be quite picky with the games. I've only got a handful of each with the intention to, once I've played them, I'll put more on. Sometimes when I have a handheld really stacked, like I've got so much emulation on my Steam Deck, for example, and my Vita, I sometimes get a little bit caught in just choosing games rather than playing games. So I wanted to be quite picky and only pick games that I really wanted to play. I've been playing Pokemon Sapphire on the 3DS and it's running really nicely without any stutterings. I'm getting a very good frame rate and it makes me smile playing this on a clamshell device. I think it's very, very nice. I decided to use standard Citra as the emulator rather than the Retroid enhanced version because there's not much enhanced about it to be honest. I found it quite tricky to set up with the one that they recommended so I would definitely get Citra if you are playing 3DS on the flip. And the way that I like to do it is be in big screen mode and then just use L3 to toggle between the two screens quite quickly and easily. That way you make the most of the screen real estate and you're not using it like a split screen. In terms of battery life, I've been so impressed so far. I've been on a four hour flight to get here. I was playing Pokemon, I was playing Brotato, which is my new obsession, and Peglin, and a couple of other games. And when I was getting off the plane, after a solid four hours, I still had over 40% battery life. So I think that's really, really good. I found the standby mode to be a little bit less good. It does drain quite a bit of power if you just leave it on standby in the middle of a game. But you can put the device on standby when you're in the middle of a game, turn it on a couple of hours later and carry on where you left off. Quite like the Steam Deck in that respect. Back to the launcher, I've been using the widget page to set up my favourite Android shortcuts. That way I don't have to root through the app drawer. I can just go on there and choose my favorite 10, for example, and click straight into them. And it's a very seamless experience working between the Android games and the emulated games. My favorite so far, I will do a dedicated video because there's a lot of Android gems, is of course Brotato, <laughs> Peglin, Dead Cells. There's so many good ones. I do really enjoy the Android. Play Store. I've also got Minecraft, of course. It plays very well and the screen is very bright. I found the slider style analog sticks to be a lot better than I was expecting. They're still not as good as like what you'd find on a Vita, but they'd get the job done. It's certainly better than using the touch screen. And then also within the launcher, there is the app draw. I'm just keeping mine simple and just as a dedicated emulation device at the moment. But if you wanted to add more, you absolutely can. In terms of the hardware, I'm absolutely obsessed. I think it's such a nice looking device. And I'm really glad that I went Team Watermelon. I don't mind so much the angle of the screen. I do wish it would go perfectly flat, but it doesn't seem to annoy me as, as much as it has annoyed other reviewers. And personally, I have no issues reaching the shoulder buttons, though I do have smaller hands. Some people said that with the angle of the screen, it sort of obscured them a little bit, but I just think that's been a little bit 
picky. It is kind of silly because this is no more or less capable really for what I'm using it for than say my Ambernic devices or my Vita, but I am finding that I am just picking this up because I find it very, very just intangibly fun. I think the clamshell is lovely. I think the color is lovely and it has been a joy to use and just sort of fold away and just take with me everywhere I go. The only criticism I've found so far, which is quite funny, is regardless of if the device is on mute or not, if you shut it down and start it up again, it just makes this really loud retroid chime as it turns on. So if you are trying to sort of have a sneaky game before bed or if you're on a plane, you will have volume no matter what when you first turn the device on and then you can mute it. It's caught me off guard a few times. And also, as I've mentioned, the standby mode does drain the battery a little bit, but it is really handy to just be sort of halfway through something, put it away and then an hour or two later, pick it straight back up where you left off. I found the screen, even in sunny conditions, to be really quite vibrant and good. It's not quite as good as, say, the anti-glare screen on the Steam Deck, but then again, why would it be? This is a fraction of the price. I have been sitting out on sort of sun lounges and stuff, and the screen has worked really well, even in sunny conditions. The speakers are a little bit pants, a little bit tinny, but I've found either with the games that I'm playing, I'll listen to music while I'm playing, or I'll be using Bluetooth headphones anyway. So the speakers are not great, but they get the job done. So far, I've really enjoyed the flip. I've got many hours of entertainment out of it. It's a perfect travel device. And if you're looking for a device that you will genuinely take with you, uh, there is no barrier to that. You don't need a case or anything. I think it's a great option and it's more than powerful enough for most people's needs. Watch this video next, which is my PlayStation Vita love letter, effectively. I'll go through how I've set everything up, and you could probably get a Vita for around the same price as one of these, so maybe check that out as an alternative to make sure you're getting the right device for you.